Please welcome Brian Schmidt, Australian National University. Hello, I'm Brian Schmidt, the Vice Chancellor of the Australian National University, located here on Ngunnawal Nambri land in Canberra, Australia. I'm excited to support the Nomad Atomics team from ANU with their 2023 Falling Walls venture. Universities are key to driving societal transformation, and here at ANU, we believe that our role is to create and curate knowledge, and use that knowledge to advance and transform society for the better. And this is what that team at Nomad Atomics is doing. They are taking cutting edge quantum research and putting it into the hands of the industries that need it. The Nomad Atomics team is successfully translating breakthrough science into a business with wide reaching applications that have lots of impact. And that's why I'm cheering for Nomad Atomics at this year's Falling Walls Venture 2023. Breaking the wall to quantum sensing. Christian Freyer, Nomad Atomics. Quantum sensors have the potential to revolutionize the way we see the world around us. By harnessing the properties of the atomic world, we can make sensors that are more precise and accurate than ever before, unlocking new applications. At Nomad Atomics, our mission is to revolutionize physical sensing through quantum technologies so that one day these sensors can monitor underground water aquifers, um, help find the resources of tomorrow in a safe and effective way, even help us navigate new worlds, and eventually to become ubiquitous tools helping autonomous vehicles of tomorrow to navigate. Unfortunately, some of the most useful types of quantum sensors are still confined to the lab or too large to be of widespread use. Nomad Atomics, we are here to change that, breaking the ball to quantum sensing. And we are getting started with Absolute G by Nomad, which is a quantum sensor measuring the, the acceleration due to gravity, a sensor that is small and robust, but also really accurate, providing real value to, the, yeah, to one of the largest industries on Earth. We've achieved this very small form factor, you can actually see it here, obviously, by optimizing every component for this application and pushing the integration far beyond what's available today. And yeah, that was a huge effort, but we are now looking forward to feasibility studies at customer sites early next year. So G is a quantum sensor, uh, but how does it actually work? There are many subtleties involved in it, but the principle behind it is relatively straightforward. We use light to store some known information in an atom. Then that atom interacts with the environment, specifically gravity, which changes that information, and we can read that out again with light. And what makes that really special is that the measurement result is directly tied to the properties of the atoms, which makes those sensors really stable and accurate. They can be integrated into small lightweight packages, and they are sensitive enough to really measure minute changes in the environment around us. And if you put these traits together, you really have a sensor that can unlock new applications and markets compared to previous technologies. In fact, at Nomad, we have early traction within a number of different fields already. We are already working with water authorities to introduce quantum sensors to detect leaks in underground water pipes, um, essentially saving water resources and preventing catastrophic breaks in water mains. We are also engaging with mineral companies to search for smaller and deeper ore deposits, ensuring access to the critical minerals of tomorrow. And we are using the same technology, we are working on navigation sensors for yeah, navigation in difficult environments, such as underwater or in space. We're combining that with a unique data as a service model, combining data acquisition, analysis, and integration. Okay? So that ensures that customers always get the optimal data quality and the underlying technology is always optimized for this application. We're combining that business model with a technology pathway that uses technology advancement uh, to open up new markets. We're getting started with Absolute G in the resource exploration and monitoring space, where gravity measurements are already well known and understood. This is a technology proving ground and provides access to early on revenue. By shrinking the technology further, we enable airborne data acquisition, opening up larger market segments and higher operating margins. And we see these long-term prospects for the technology to become used in 
uh, navigation systems, first in the space and defense sector, and eventually for ubiquitous use in consumer vehicles. Okay, this is an ambitious pathway, but uh, Norman has the team to do it. Myself and my two co-founders are world experts in atomic quantum sensors and have spent the last decade building and optimizing and deploying these systems. Um, yeah, we have spun out of world-class universities, or like ANU. We've worked at Humboldt University here in Berlin before, and we are now backed by some of Australia's largest VCs and have a team of 10 people after bringing in other experts from business development, engineering, and physics. We are expanding out of Canberra, uh, spinning up a new lab and office <coughs> here in Berlin, and a prototyping lab in Melbourne. And over the next year, we are scaling our team up to 30 people, and of course, start servicing our con uh, yeah, customers in the resource sector and pushing the technology forwards. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you. Questions, please. Simon first, Chaz second, and then we will have also this block. Hold on. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. Um, how do your sensors actually compare to existing commercial sensors, like in terms of sensitivity and, and like environments that it can be deployed? So existing, existing commercial sensors that are comparable, like gravity, gravimeters, essentially, um, have a significantly larger form factor and are essentially built for geophysics and indoor use. Okay? And really, the critical difference here is that this was from the ground up optimized for field deployable settings. And uh, the sensitivity is on the same order of magnitudes. We'll know more after we have those initial feasibility trials um, and direct comparisons. But we are talking on the order of, you know, one to ten microgals is the unit here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So the next one will be by Chaz. Here, 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 behind you, here, here. Thank you. That's great. I can see the potential, but. What are the priorities or the focus or the fastest route to market? So I think really um, the fastest route to revenue and a market for these sensors because of where the technology is at and where it will progress over the next five to ten years, we see the resource sector as the first commercial opportunity here. That's why we focus it on, on it. Uh, we also, you know, we started in Australia. Australia has a great resource sector with, um, you know, great companies working um, and needing those solutions. Um, yeah, in terms of the um, size of the markets, there are larger markets available in the navigation space, for example, once the technology is ready for that. But um, yeah, the, you know, before you put these things into the car, in terms of the um, manufacturing cost, in terms of the size, there's a lot of um, yeah, enabling technology work to be done, essentially. And therefore, that's sort of the, the technology roadmap I mentioned in the pitch. Okay, next question doesn't come from the jury, I think, but second row here, please. Oh, no, sorry, I forgot you. Oh, oh. okay, go on. Um, are you able to take measurements while it's moving, or can you only measure static? That's a really great question. So this device is optimized for taking measurements while it's static, right? Um, the, like, if you measure accelerations or gravity, the fundamental issue is that you always then measure both the you know, gravitational pull of Earth and your own acceleration, right? So in terms of the measurement bandwidth and the um, order of magnitude of gravity differences that you can resolve, um, the system really needs to be designed from the ground up for dynamic platforms, and that is exactly what that next stage uh, on the drone-based platforms is about. Okay, wonderful. This time, absolutely, it's your turn. So following up on that, what does the um, deployment schedule look like? Do you have to, do you go and do that? Do you take measurements every two feet? Do you? Yeah. So, so at least initially, right, um, we are, you know, approaching these customers from the mining space and so on ourselves, and we have a yeah, surveying team essentially going out and moving these things from place to place, and then uh, combining that with the data analysis that you need to do to remove background signals that you're not interested in, for example. And yeah, then you get essentially a map of the gravity, mm -hmm. you know, differences. Okay, 30 seconds left. Simon, fast. Do you actually use quantum states, like superposition states, for your measurements, or is it just an interferometric measurement? No, so this is a, it's a true quantum sensor of the second generation. You use the superposition of the, like, internal atomic states, right? It's an atom interferometer, is sort of the uh, um, name for it. Um, it does not use entanglement. So 
Um, so, but yes, uh, definitely use a superposition. Okay, that's it. Five seconds left. <laughs> we won't make it. Thank you so much. Thank you. And. Uh, <laughs>